outrage tonight among parents, students and teachers at Olympian High School in Chula Vista after pornography popped up during an online math class. As News 8's Alicia Summers reports, it's not the first controversy to hit the district this week. This recently reported porn incident is just one of several distractions that have happened during an already difficult time, with schools being closed and everyone forced to learn virtually. Sweetwater Union High School just started their new semester all online Monday. Already the district got several reports of inappropriate interruptions. A student at Olympian High tells us that someone bombed an 11th grade math class Wednesday with pornography. A parent tells us there are usually about 40 students in this math class all around the age of 16. The student said the X-rated video popped up when the teacher was instructing, then again during another class. The student also said the teacher was not sure how to turn off the porn or where it was coming from and told students to try and ignore it and listen to the lesson instead. This is just the most recent report of an inappropriate disruption during virtual learning. On Monday, the first day of school at Southwest High, San Diego police say a student brandished a BB gun during an online class. Another student told News 8 that loud music had interrupted virtual class as well. The Sweetwater Union High School District says it's working to evaluate protocols to increase security and released this statement saying in part, over the past couple of days, we have had some incidents reported to administration of students not belonging to a class entering a Google Meet and creating disruptions. These are very unfortunate incidents and want to assure our community that we are taking this very seriously to ensure that this does not continue to happen. The district also says it's working to identify these individuals and address this conduct. In the meantime, it's reminding teachers and students of some steps they can take to ensure security, like not sharing access codes and removing students from the online classes when a disruption occurs. Carlo? This scene in Ocean Beach last night is getting a lot of attention on social media. A crowd of hundreds gathered at the drum circle in Veterans Park. Hardly anyone wore masks and there was no social distancing going on. Police eventually broke up the crowd, but today we learned that no one was cited for violating the public health order. News 8's Kelly Hassadal has the latest from Ocean Beach. Well, it took police a while to break up the crowd last night because there were so many people and they kept moving from one area to another, from Saratoga Park to the lifeguard parking lot to Veterans Plaza. Now, police say this situation is more complicated than it seems, that they can't simply just give out citations to people for not following the public health order. But some people in OB are frustrated. This is what it looked like last night in Ocean Beach around 10 p.m. A mass gathering that neighbors say keeps getting bigger every week. The crowd anywhere from 200 to 500 people. Police did not cite anyone for violating the public health order. It's just sending a message of anybody can do whatever they want. It doesn't matter. Brad Dixon owns the Ocean Beach Hotel located directly across the street from Veterans Plaza. It's Dodge City down here. It really is. It's it's like make your own rules. San Diego police tell us they are doing routine patrols in the area when possible and enforcing violations such as open alcohol and narcotics. A statement sent to News 8 reads in part, quote, our hope is that those involved in the drum circle events would consider self-managing and perhaps find a start and end time, which honors those who live in the surrounding neighborhood. OB Town Council Treasurer Corey Bruin says the situation is frustrating, but he points out at least this week police broke it up. By 11 o'clock, the area was clear, and that's an improvement from last week. It's the latest mass gathering that's drawn attention. Last week, hundreds gathered at Cardiff State Beach for a church service. Though some got parking tickets, state park rangers didn't cite anyone for violating the public health order. I would say that it continues to create a lack of faith in our government officials to enforce the order that the county has sent down. The county recently announced a compliance call center and a safe reopening compliance team, but its focus is cracking down on businesses that violate the county's public health order and the priority is the most egregious violators. I want to see a comp compliance team. What's a compliance team? What do they do? What mechanisms for enforcement do they have? Um, you know, the fine for not complying with the health order is $1,000. Who has the ability to issue those fines? We need help down here, like police, uh, health department, uh, city officials, whoever. And I reached out to Councilmember Jennifer Campbell's office as well as the mayor's office. Councilmember Campbell did not comment today. The mayor's office did not respond. Marcel and Carlo.
Thanks, Kelly. Grand Caribe Shoreline Park will be closed until further notice because of coronavirus concerns. The city of Coronado and the Port of San Diego reopened the park on the Silver Strand to visitors back in May. But with more people visiting the park than usual, social distancing became harder to enforce. The park will now stay closed until there are no restrictions in place for gatherings. San Diego County's COVID-19 positive rate continues to fall. The county today is reporting 263 newly confirmed cases out of more than 11,000 tests. That's a positive rate of just 2.3%, dropping the 14-day rolling average to 4.9%. The number of cases now stands at 31,127. More than 25,000 people have recovered. Five new deaths reported today bring the death toll to 583. The case rate is down to just over 110 per 100,000 people, and that does remain above the state trigger of 100. The man accused of opening fire in the Habat of Poway, killing one woman and injuring several others, returned to court today. News 8's Chris Groh was at the downtown courthouse for the in-person court appearance, which is rare these days. And we want to remind our viewers that normally we don't show the face or use the name of John Ernest, the suspect in question. However, today was a uh, status conference hearing and it was a uh, procedural type event. So we do have a policy then to use his name and to show uh, him in court. And he was obviously inside the courtroom today. Again, this was a procedural uh, hearing. This was a status conference in this case. Remember, that jury trial was supposed to start in June, but due to COVID, it's been delayed until at least March 15th, 2021. And today was a very short uh, status conference. Again, both sides agreeing uh, to some procedural changes. The hearing very quick, and it was actually very rare to see Ernest appear inside that tank, inside the courtroom, as opposed to a virtual appearance. That's normally been uh, what happens during this COVID-19 pandemic. However, the judge noted that it only happened. We only saw Ernest inside court due to the special nature of this case. Now, Ernest is facing the death penalty. He's accused of opening fire and shooting four people inside the Habada Poway last year. Three were injured and one woman, Lori Kay, was killed. Now, Ernest is also accused of setting fire to the Islamic Center of Escondido a month before the Poway shooting. And Ernest is also charged in federal court. However, that trial has also been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Marcella Carlo. Thanks, Chris. The DA's office and local law enforcement officials are warning people about an alarming spike in fentanyl related overdose deaths in the county. According to a release from the district attorney's office, there are already 51 more pending and confirmed fentanyl related overdose deaths in 2020 than in all of 2019. This image is from a seizure earlier this year of 150 pounds of fentanyl. DA Summer Steppen says it's important for the public to remember that any illegal drug could be dangerous. The San Diego City Council says the city can handle protests here and doesn't need or want intervention from federal law enforcement. Federal agents descended on Portland last month where nightly port protests had been taking place for weeks. Council President Georgette Gomez called the Portland tactics heavy handed authoritarian behavior. By a 6-2 to two vote, the council adopted a resolution asserting the city's authority to protect its own streets without intervention by federal law enforcement officers. The resolution denounces unconstitutional actions by federal law enforcement officers and affirms the council stands up for the First Amendment rights of its citizens. A groundbreaking bill making its way through the state legislature is pushing to expand compensation eligibility for victims of police violence. It would be the first of its kind in the nation and remove common barriers that typically stop victims from receiving compensation. Things like relying solely on the contents of a police report. It would allow for other evidence to be used. That includes medical and mental health records. This is a necessary critical step towards protecting victims of police violence, as well as their families, from the financial and emotional devastation that this sort of harmful violence can inflict. Lawmakers were joined virtually today by several surviving family members who share their own stories. The bill is expected to make its way to the governor no later than September.
An important reminder for San Diegans who are registered to vote. The Registrar of Voters is sending this postcard to nearly 2 million registered voters across the county, telling them to expect a mail ballot for this year's presidential election. The governor signed two executive orders authorizing the move so Californians can exercise their right to vote in a safe manner. Voters are also encouraged to make sure all registration information is up to date. Every registered voter in the state of California will receive a mail ballot for the November election. Now, San Diego Republicans are warning that could lead to abuse of the system. News 8's Brandon Lewis explains their concerns and the registrar of voters' response that they've never found evidence of fraud through mail-in voting. Marcella and Carlo, the concern is over who is on the voter rolls and whether there's a potential for fraud using the mail-in system. The registrar of voters says he's confident in the process come November. The November election is less than three months away, and with the pandemic showing no signs of going away, California is continuing to move toward a nearly all-mail-in ballot system. We've conducted well-run elections in, in San Diego County, and I see that happening for the November election. Now, having said that, there are a lot of changes there, and there's a lot of worries about how the upcoming election is going to be conducted because of those respective changes. But county Republicans are echoing concerns by their national counterparts about an increase of vote by mail. It's not that difficult to to uh, you know, forge uh, ballots, and, and we, we think of that. Nobody would ever do that, but the stakes are very high, and you can and I think everybody can appreciate that. Mail-in voting is increasing in popularity. In March, before the pandemic gripped the region, more than 70 percent of ballots were safely mailed in. Over my 24 years of conducting elections, I have not seen any level of systemic fraud that is out there. Even the local head of the GOP votes by mail, but alleges incorrectly mailed ballots are ripe for abuse. The idea that the voter file has no inaccuracy, we come across duplicates all the time. What is the most guaranteed way that there will be no fraud and nobody voting that shouldn't be voting? It is in person, show up in person, show your ID uh, and uh, vote that way. The registrar disputes this, saying they are constantly adjusting the roles, including using data from a mailer asking voters to confirm their information. We are able to receive that information of those individuals that have potentially moved through the U.S. Postal Service. For the skeptics, the county will have more than 100 staffed ballot drop sites and are tracking every ballot from printing to mailing and returned and then compares every signature. We've conducted well-run elections in, in San Diego County, and I see that happening for the November election. The registrar says you can expect to receive those mailers over the next week. Mail-in ballots start to go out about a month before the election.